Welcome back to Spotlight. I'm Eric Wotilla here in the My News 26 studio, joined today by Congressman John Molinar. And just before the break, we were talking a little bit about the defense budget, and uh, you mentioned a little bit about uh, North Korea and a uh, rogue dictator, as you put it, which is sums, I think, up the situation many Americans uh, are feeling uh, quite well. Uh, what has been the atmosphere in Congress as we see uh, North Korea firing missile tests and uh, ignoring many of the UN sanctions that are being placed out there? Well, as you mentioned, the UN has been uh, providing uh, sanctions and actually Russia and China have actually voted with us. And I give the president and uh, Nikki Haley, who's our representative at the UN, a lot of credit for putting together that coalition that was able to put sanctions in place. Uh, they probably need to bite a little bit more. Um, you know, we still have China uh, trading with North Korea. China really needs to step up their game because they're the ones in the region who have the most influence on North Korea. And as long as they're continuing sort of a business as usual status quo, that doesn't get North Korea's attention. So we want to encourage more there. We need to partner with South Korea, Japan, making sure that they know that we are with them and that we will not allow North Korea to continue to threaten them. Uh, we've been doing joint military exercises, uh, both with South Korea and Japan, uh, in the event that they are threatened by whether it's a ICBM or you know these nuclear tests. Uh, it's uh, provocative for the entire world, and, and we just simply cannot allow North Korea to become a nuclear power with the capability of weapons that can reach our shores. Certainly, and North Korea isn't the only threat uh, that's been faced, especially on a global scale. Just this week, we saw more terrorist attacks in Europe. Now, of course, these are international issues, mm -hmm. but of course, the fear of Americans is sure. that they could hit on home soil once again. What are the feelings in Congress on that note? Well, again, you get to border security, you get to uh, support of our law enforcement and our intelligence agencies, making sure they have the tools they need to keep America safe. Um, those are things we continue to work uh, at. Um, we need to make sure that uh, people who see something that uh, is out of the norm or that they have questions about uh, can report that. Because often you'll find once a terrorist incident occurs, someone says, you know, I thought I saw something that seemed a little suspicious, but I didn't want to raise any alarms. Well, those are things all Americans, we need to be uh, vigilant in terms of uh, defending our security. And uh, definitely looking at uh, national security, security at home, very important. On that same note of security, I want to end on a topic that might hit a little close to home to you. Uh, a little while back, you were at a congressional baseball practice sure. when a shooter opened fire. And we hear about these sorts of uh, topics on the news every day, mm -hmm. but I have to imagine being there in person had to be completely different sure. and really hit home. Well, it, it's something you never anticipate happening. It was 7 o'clock in the morning, and we were out there practicing for a charity baseball game that goes back, the history goes back till 1908, Republicans and Democrats, it raises funds for kids in need. Um, and you just don't expect that happening. The good news is we had uh, some Capitol Police there who were able to take out the shooter. Um, five people, uh, innocent you know, participants were injured. All five are recovering. In fact, uh, Matt Micah, who is originally from Michigan, uh, was in my office this past week, and it was just great to see him. Um, and, you know, so things could have been so much worse, but um, it's something you hope people never have to go through. But there was a lot of heroism on the, on the field that day from the, the responders who came in, lives that were saved because the EMTs knew what they were doing, and uh, the medical per personnel that uh, attended the wounded, and, and actually some of the members of Congress who actually shielded children who were nearby and uh, looked out for one another. So it was, uh, you know, we ended up raising uh, one and a half million dollars. We usually raise closer to three or four hundred thousand dollars. Twenty-five thousand people came out to just see a bunch of old timers <laughs> playing baseball, but they wanted to support it because they just don't want that to be in any way define our country and the values that we have. So um, a good outcome, but a, you know, just a tragic day. And uh, very quickly, one last question on that same note. Did that experience affect your feelings on national security uh, in any way? 
You know, it, it, you know, I'm grateful for the response of our, you know, the police that were there. You know, we, did, we only had two officers who were there, um, and I appreciate the swift response. The person who committed that crime is someone who had tremendous hatred, bitterness in his heart, and, um, you know, he had been, uh, you know, creating all sorts of problems where he was in life and uh, had come down to really, you know, stalk and then hunt, you know, Republicans. And uh, so that's something that, you know, you hate to see that kind of bitterness in anyone's heart. And for him to think somehow he was doing something good is just a twisted way of thinking. And I think we need to combat that kind of twisted thinking and ideology anywhere you see it. When it devalues human life, when somehow people think that uh, they can um, assassinate innocent people, whether it's terrorism or that kind of activity, we've just got to fight against that as a society. Certainly. And again, thank you for your time here today, Congressman Molinar. This has been a special edition of Spotlight. Congressman John Molinar here in our studio. And if you'd like to see a local person making a difference here on Spotlight, be sure to email our newsroom, news at mynews26.com, and help us select the next guests on our show. For Spotlight, I'm Eric Watilla. Thanks for tuning in.